Hello guys and welcome to this tutorial. I wanna make the eyes using XYZ. First I wanna start with the iris. But the very important thing to know is you need to have okay scale. If I scale this, if I measure this, you see that it says 28 millimeters. So by default ZBrush scale is set to 1 which is very small for Maya so in order to avoid that if i load this guy from zbrush okay if i measure it you see it is a small and it says one we don't want one so we need to go to a, a scale master and first i want to press on this sets in a scale that updates then i want to go to centimeters for both here and here so i type 18 or something uh, higher than that so I click on this resize swap tool so press OK now if I do measuring this guy again you see it's working and even we could test it in Maya so export so I go to Maya okay if you are in Maya so I import that mesh so you see this is the floor and it is you know much bigger compared to the floor shouldn't be like so it won't work okay so keep that you know in the right escape so i come back to zbrush and i'm going to continue moving uh, with the eye so for the eye i append circle 3d and with this selected i want to select the model the brush i hold down alt and i hover over the face and i grab them all together so delete and island so i hover over the edge extrude edge loop and i push it down something like this and for this as well I want to get rid of this, so I grab crease, edge loop complete, hold down alt, click on it, and I just let it go. So we get something like that, but we need to expand this in a hole in here. Scale, scale it up. And we could turn on dynamic, yeah, that is fine and even we could you know, expand this a little more if we want to but that that would be working just fine so i append another silker in here so i get rid of this isolation and turn those two off I press w come back and i to my gizmo I scale this down yeah that should fit and uh, we need something like so to fill that region for us so you need to make sure this is under this one so i turn this transparency and ghost on yeah so like this again Z model area. I want to make sure I have some kind of you know bulging effect in here so I want to select the swivel edge loop and I just drag that up if you tap on those loops once it repeats same action but I want to have just you know some kind of nudge in there just a little touch So make it a little uh, curvy like that, you know, some kind of explosion like, and that should be working for us. So I merge them together. We need to take them inside of you know Maya to unwrap. So merge, control W, and export. I, this is gonna be I, Iris. So see you in the Maya. Okay. So I import that mesh, go to the face, right click, I go to the face, I double click to grab the iris only, and uh, I separate this, makes a you know, group for us, 
iris this is iris and this is pupil for sure go to UV editor with this iris selected and I select create a normal base and that would be working just okay so I go to hypershade press tab AI a standard surface and tab file texture grab this color from the XYZ and I grab this click on this now icon to make it bigger so I just fuse this to this base color and if you want to see that in your space you need to click on this texture this one and then you need to go in here and keep the UV tiling mode off and uh, we need to select it and I just put that on that mesh so I select this and I do this okay so it is off we need to adjust it I go to UV editor and in UV editor I want to first make the whole you know UV a little smaller to match it better with that shape a little then I want to select this point and I hold on shift and I right click on the next you know, point you know, to that to make a loop and loop selection and I do that again so I do that multiple times so please know that I select this, I hold down shift and I click, it makes in a loop selection and that's it, so easy. Click, hold down shift and double click, you know, the point next to this makes loop selection for us. And in combination with that, we need to use soft selection. So I select this, hold down shift and just grab this area. and grab them all and I just readjust it again so we are getting there as you see it's so easy double click hold on shift ER oh, adjust it click and shift click Turn this off, soft selection. Select this point and make loop selection. So I'm just trying to make it you now even. Definitely we need to change the texture size a bit because this part is now too small. Uh, for now I just grab this point and make sure I got this soft selection on just you know adjust it a little mesh this a little better Just select and adjust. So if I come back to our view and I go to object mode or select another thing, you see this is working. And if you want to uh, divide that and make that as most press 3, I select the iris, press 3 on my keyboard, make it as most. And if you want to come back from that, press 1. But as you see, this uh, part is a little small, needs to be a little bigger. This part is almost one third of the eye. This, you know, zigzag shape like. 
okay so we need to change the UV a little and texture grab them all use face just you know make it a little smaller so you see it grows it's just a little So I need to come back to the texture, readjust this, so I come back to iris. So this is now a little off because we scale it. So I select the vertex. Reposition that. So as you see, it is too easy. You could sculpt the iris in ZBrush if you want to. You can, you know, message me. I'll do that in ZBrush as well. Press 3, 5 and 3. And it's, uh, keep the texture on. Yeah, it's working okay. Okay, and let's put some kind of light in there to make everything is okay. So I select the very first one, press ER, scale it up. Then I put in a displacement map. Exposure maybe 13, intensity 3, and I click on this, you know, to see that. Yeah, it's showing something in there. And I quickly go to my render setting, to our node renderer, to make it at least 6, to have, you know, proper amount of quality. Get rid of this grid, click on this grid, and I turn it off. Now I go to hyper shade. In hyper shade, I get rid of this texture for now. Tab, file texture. Select the displacement map. Make it bigger, click on this icon. Set that to row and Mori. You will tightly mod Mori. Tab. Plus minus average. Divide. It is so easy. Just uh, follow along step by step and you'll have no problem at all. So this is the divide and shader. Tab. Shader. Displacement match shader. So already we got this in the scenes, I get rid of that. So first I start with plus minus. So I click on this add new item twice, one and two. Okay, so in other color, we need to click on this plus icon. You just you know, bring that out. And in here, in 3D0, I type minus 05, which is the right value for XYZ textures. Control C, Control V to copy that. Press Enter to make sure it is OK. So we need to fill this input 3D1. So I just you now connect this to this. So we typed in 3D0. 555.5 and we connected this to this you know input 3d1 so right after that we need to use this output 3d and connect this to this and that's it and right after that we need to use the x and connect this to displacement map so make sure you do that correctly x to displacement map Okay, 
So one more thing to do is only connecting this uh, displacement shader to this. So there is you know greenish color in there as you see this one. Just grab it and I'll connect this to this and that's it finished. And I go to my shader and I just want to use something brighter for now. Whenever you are trying displacement map, make sure you keep your texture off. That way you make sure your texture of displacement map is working and you see the flaw. So always keep the texture of the albedo color information off. So keep the spec very very low maybe you know, and the roughness I just increase that and I want to select this middle mouse click and drag it on this one and one step to do is select this Arnold and uh, the subdivision make sure you have at least two if you don't do that your mesh will be very flat two is very good for testing but for final renders you know you can you know try three or even four three makes it very slow but it gives you a you know, deeper you know, effect. So for now, I keep the you know, tree. Let me zoom in. So you could see the effect in there. And as you see, it becomes very slow, but it gives you a very nice effect. So it is working very, very good. So I could store a snapshot. If I decrease this to two, and I retry that. You know, it kind of decreases that effect. Three is very good. But uh, for the tutorial, I keep that at two to make the renders a little faster. And if you want to boost that up, you could go to auto bump and click on this enable auto bump. And you need to make sure you have the auto bump, you know, turned on in here. And I come back to my textures, go to my standard, you know, surface of Arnold. I increase this all the way up, grab this middle mouse and now just put it in here, a subsurface color. Uh, for radius, maybe just you know something dark, brownish color, something. I keep this very low, maybe 0.3, because this mesh is small and it needs in you know, a little bit of the subsurface. And this random block I try too. This is you know newest version. It's a little better. Now we got the texture as well, so I click on this and you can see that, you know, with the texture. So I wait a little. We need to make this, you know, people uh, pure black. So I just you know, click this off. So press tab, AI, standard surface of pupil and nothing fancy we just you know give it in you know, a pure black with low very low zero spec so I got rid of the spec drop it down all the way down maybe just a little hint of that and for the base you need to use black pure black so I select that Just making some space. Just middle mouse, drag on this shape. 
And next step is I want to use the bump. So So in here I go to geometry, I want to use the bump a little, the normal map file. So you can see it in there. I use this bump just a little. Click on this and click on this icon. Okay. Make sure whenever you use this, use it very, very subtle and low. Otherwise, you'll end up something very dry and unusual. So keep that, you know, row as well as the Mari for sure. And in here, I want to type bump depth, something very low, something like, you know, 0.1 or even lower. So I try that again. Click on this. And we need to have a little speck on the surface and we need to make the texture a little darker so I go back to my texture and in this spec and I increase this and on IOR you could use a skin preset increase that and I in my texture I could use exposure first to make it a little darker redo that I hold on shift and I grab only this section so if you change the iterations to 3 it gives you a slightly better results so I go to render update full scene to make sure it does the job is stop this and update full scene gives you a deeper effect and by the way if you want to have very very deep effect you need to do that by hand in ZBrush and if you want me to do it for you please uh, comment and I'll do that for you with pleasure ZBrush one is you know deeper because it is mesh you know uh, totally and directly comes with any bumps and the other stuff and there is no need to use any kind of you know extra stuff yeah as you can see it becomes better we need to tweak it but it works very very good now I want to come back to my ZBrush I want to bring the head Mirrors the head with this an eyebrow. Control W to make sure it is one single polygroup. Export that out now. Head. Come back to Maya. Maya, where are you? Yeah, this is the Maya. Uh, 
I get rid of this and this. So we got the group ER. We need to do the cornea as well. Can press four. And make sure you have this part of your eye, you know, hidden below this shape. Like natural eye, you know. So I click on this. And by the way, you could increase the displacement mesh shader uh, in your shader. And if you want to boost it or increase or decrease it, just go to your divide. You could, you know, increase that something a little higher, something like this, or lower. Yeah, run that again. And we need to get rid of this part and I'll do that in a second. And if you want to have no sharper effect, just go to your setting and uh, this is you know too much and I just you know drop it down to something like something like this and it becomes uh, sharper okay and to cut this area I go to hyper shade again I select them all rearrange graph to reorder everything for me so in order to do so all we need to do is just go into opacity go to opacity it is located in geometry so in opacity i use ramp texture and that's it so just you know put that you know something like so and if you want to preview that just click on this s which you know, isolate a color for you so you can see that uh, on your viewport. So I click on this S, becomes blue. So just keep this you know, next to my hand. Let me just drag it you know, in a way that you can see as well. So I change it to circular and make sure you turn this on so you can see what you're doing. So just uh, and if you want to make it you know, really really smooth you could use a smooth. Could, you could try different options in here to see which one is more proper and more smooth and natural. So once you're done, make sure you turn this off, not to have it in your render. So it is cut. Definitely after having the cornea and the real lashes from the X gen, it will be very, very different. And of course with the tweaks as well. And make sure whenever you are doing something like this, always try the lashes. You know, make you know, very quick lashes for your eyebrow and the 
lashes so you can see more accurate if you don't do that once you apply your action or whatever it is you'll be surprised so think always beforehand to make sure everything is you know working for you Well, this is a little too much, but it is uh, so early to judge bits because we need to add the, the cornea and right after that we can judge. A store a snapshot. Let's uh, decrease that a little. So I keep this on. This S. Oh, make it, you know, a little more broad. I click on play. Yeah, this one is better. And once you're done with that, click this off to see the texture. Okay, I want to change a little the lighting. So in order to do so, I first get rid of the subdivision and stuff to make it you know work much faster. Bump and subdivision. Always do that to have you know very fast you know renders and update the scene. That becomes flat. So. To make the shadows a little harsher, I make it you know smaller to have you no know, more harsher, sharper shadows. Yeah, and the light becomes you know more broad because we made the light source smaller. I go to my perspective, change the focal length to something you know higher to have less distortion for sure yeah that's a little better so I come back to subdivision and turn them back on again And samples to two to have you know less noisy render so I click on this yeah I just wanted to have a little hint of the shadows to show the depth a little better so I click on this play Hold down shift and grab that region. Yeah, it's rendering. Yeah, it's working perfectly fine. Even though we don't have nothing in the scene, just one light. Yeah, it's really, really good. And if you see the render goes fast, that's because I paused the video and my PC is not that fast. Yeah.
yeah the fibers and the rest is working just fine I like it Okay, thank you guys. Uh, in the next one, I do the cornea uh, for the eye. So, thank you for watching.